In what ways does your media product use, develop or challenge forms and conventions of real media products? When planning our film, Sweet Bullets, we decided that it would be a good idea to look at the older side of film noirs such as Double Indemnity and the more modern side with neo-noirs such as Blade Runner and Batman Begins. This enabled us to analyse the contrast in films over time, allowing us to highlight key features that have stuck with the film noir genre, such as low-key lighting, an urban setting, jazz style of music and even clothing such as suits. By doing this we were able to implement certain factors into our film that we found necessarily conventional, as well as factors that were unconventional, in order to ensure that our film stood out from as well as fitted in the film noir genre. We took advantage of our broad research and used different aspects from different areas of our research to create the best opening we could. For example, our research of the film Double Indemnity gave us the idea of having flashbacks of the character who died and their journey of how the incident occurred. This also follows the same idea as Sunset Boulevard as the opening shows police arriving at a murder scene. And although we did not use this exactly in our film, it influenced our plot similarly to Double Indemnity. The majority of our influence to include flashbacks came from our research on Gun Crazy, which used flashbacks very effectively in the film. Another example of an influence from our research is from the neo-noir Blade Runner, as this was where we gathered our idea of the film to be a detective-style film noir, which is conventional for the genre. Our research showed us that women in the film noir genre are generally looked down upon, objectified under the male's possession, and we decided to develop this convention by creating Detective Brown, a woman, one of the main characters of our film. For example, showing her in a shot with the male, showing equality in genders and status, which was another part of our film noir we aimed to develop. As well as this, we decided to raise the importance of the femme fatale as she slowly grows to be the cause of all of the problems in our plot, again developing the typical unimportant status of women in this genre. We also used our research to challenge classic convention as we saw that there was a lot of use of shot reverse shots, which are where the camera alternates between two characters having a conversation. In the films we looked at, therefore, we decided not to implement this into our film and use it as a gateway to the unconventional, abnormal side of our opening. Another factor that we decided on as a group to develop through the research was to have a very wide range target audience as we gathered that we could attract the old cinema viewers as they will have experienced film noirs themselves. Therefore they would have enjoyed our film as we kept a large amount of typical film noir aspects despite our minor changes to the convention as we could also attract the younger side of the cinema viewers with the dark, violent thriller side, maximising popularity of our film and overall developing the stereotypical middle age range of 20 to 40 target audience of film noirs. How does your media product represent particular social groups? After doing a lot of research into film noir films, both the older style and the newer style, with some neo-noirs, we discovered that throughout all of the films we looked at, gender is portrayed very stereotypically. For example, the women are shown to be weak and very dependent on the males, and the males are shown to be the ones who took part in all of the action, and are again stereotypically conveyed as powerful and controlling. We decided that we wanted to have a more modern approach to our film noir inspired film and a good way to do this was through the use of social groups. We focused on gender, challenging convention with a female murderer and a female detective, giving them a lot of screen time and importance. We thought that these small factors would be effective because females are rarely if ever seen having a main role in the film noir genre, especially having the amount of screen time that the two females do in our film. Furthermore, because our film is set in 2016, we thought that a sense of gender equality was required as a more modernist approach would not have worked without this aspect. Examples of our gender representation are spread throughout our opening, such as showing both Detective Brown and Detective Sampson in the same shots as they converse, showing equality, however most importantly the major anti-stereotype of Scarlet, the killer, being female. She is portrayed to be intelligent, powerful, independent and deadly, completely contradicting stereotypical female characteristics of being vulnerable, weak, stupid and objectified. This was very important for us as we really wanted to challenge the stereotypical convention and move away from this factor of the film noir genre. What kind of media institution might distribute your media product and why? As a group, we decided that we wanted our film to be conglomerate-owned and therefore to be distributed in this way. We decided this because of our wide-range target audience of 12 to 35 and we concluded that we would have our film to be conglomerate-owned in order to reach this age range. Furthermore, 
Our film may be film or inspired, but it also has aspects of other genres inside, such as thriller with the murder aspect and also crime due to the investigation factor being a large part of our film, and these genres are watched and loved by a range of ages. Films that are not produced by conglomerates, for example In Our Name, an independent British film distributed by Artificial Eye, usually have a more niche target audience. Using In Our Name as an, as an example, this film had a target audience of people who were in or interested in the armed forces, and this was the focus of the movie. However, our film does not have a niche target audience, as ours is the main cinema-going age range. Therefore, our film would be best suited to be distributed by a conglomerate, as opposed to a smaller distribution company who would lack funds to reach the wide range of people that we target. Who would be the audience for your media product? We decided that the target audience for our media product was to be both males and females of the ages 12 to 35. We decided this to be the age range that we targeted because this range is the main cinema going audience and therefore to maximise success of the film this is the best audience to aim for. We decided to start our target audience as low as the age of 12 because our film aimed to have the age rating of 12 due to the limited violence and no cursing and therefore again we would be able to maximise the success we have. Moreover, this age range are the ages that are the most interested in the thriller or crime genres and therefore these ages were the best to aim for. However, our film may also be viewed by older ages than our target audience because they have experienced watching film noirs themselves when they were first coming out and trending in the cinemas. How did you attract or address your target audience? After deciding that our target audience would be the main cinema going audience of ages 12 to 35, we also decided that the best way to reach this age range was through the use of social media. We use social media to raise awareness of the film as well as to get our feedback on the film. For example, we posted our survey link on Facebook as we figured that we could best reach our target audience this way. After some research discovering that 82% of online adults between 18 and 29 have Facebook and use it on a daily basis. Facebook was not the only form of social media that we, that we used as we also use Twitter, posting our preliminary scene 3 on there and using this to get some feedback from our target audience. This effective use of social media allowed us to make the best use of our resources as social media is very easily accessible for us. Furthermore, we attracted our audience through social media by posting some preliminary work such as teasers to raise awareness of our film because we did not create a trailer, so this was our alternative. What have you learnt about technologies from the process of constructing this product? The first step that we made during the process of constructing our media product was an upgrade in software. At first for our preliminary film, we were using iMovie and this was not good for editing as it took a long time and had very little effects. The upgrade we made was to Final Cut Pro 10 and this enabled us to edit a lot faster and more efficiently. We, click, we quickly learnt how to use the different tools and soon much preferred it to what we were used to. More forms of technologies that we learnt about throughout the process was the use of Web, web 2.0 tools such as Prezi, GoAnimate, Zoho, SlideShare and GoConquer. We used these to present different things on our blogs from ideas of characters to film scripts. Another new program that we were introduced to was LiveType. We used this to create our title and credits of our film and we found this very easy to use and effective as we taught ourselves how to use it through trial and error. Furthermore, we also used GarageBand for some sound effects, including a heartbeat and a monotone drone. Looking back at your preliminary task, what do you feel that you have learned in the progression to your final product? In my preliminary task, I had just learned about different techniques such as the 180 degree wall, match on action and shot reverse shot. I feel that in the process of creating my final product, I have developed my editing skills greatly, shown by the difference in techniques used in my preliminary film compared to my final film openings, such as transitions, shallow depth of field, and the use of layers for different effects. An example of my progression is in my preliminary task, I attempted to perform the use of a 180 degree rule, however I broke it as I passed the halfway point. However, in my film, I show progression as I perform the 180 degree rule without breaking it showing an improvement in my filming and knowledge as a whole. Another effect that I developed was my use of match on action, as I showed this in my preliminary task, however it was not as high quality as the match on action it I performed in my final film. One more technique that we learned about throughout the process of creating our film was the graphic match, and we used this in our film to show the passing of time as well as an effective end to our opening.